So this is Roy Candy from Epic Gaming Night. This is Rob Newman with Epic Gaming Night. Mark Street from Board Game Corner. And we're going to take a first impressions look of Zaya Embers Forsaken Star for these guys. I play this game a ton, but i um, been showing them off all the different components and get their thoughts on Zaya. Zaya Embers of a Forsaken Star adds tons of new elements to the Zaya sandbox. The first is there's three new ships. The tier one ship allows you to gather resources when you're in asteroids. You can get a random resource as you fly through. Then the second tier ship allows you to teleport back to a recall token that you place on the board. The third ship allows you to convert damage into energy. There are new rules for setup where you always start with this dying star in the middle of the board with the space station orbiting around it. Then you attach sectors to that star tile based on the number of players. There is a new fame point track that will bring events into play the first time a player reaches the event space on the fame track. These events can do all sorts of crazy things from having the shields around planets go down to different trade embargoes which make it harder to trade or there being lots of extra resources in different asteroids and there are 22 different event cards that can really mix up your Zaya game. There are 10 new title cards that you can mix into your title deck for new ways to get fame points. It's a brand new economy board which can fix the issues with short routes because planets will run out of resources as players continue to buy from them and other planets will get lots of extra resources when people sell to those planets. At the beginning of the game, you roll a d6 to populate the economy board with each type of resource. Then when a player buys a resource from a planet, you take those resources off the economy board, depleting some of the resources available from that planet. And then when you sell at another planet, that planet then produces the good that that planet would sell. So it kind of has this chain effect as the different planets create the different types of good and make it so that short routes are now impossible to overuse. When a planet is completely out of resources, you put one credit on the economy board, and if you sell to that planet to create that kind of resource back on the board, you'll gain an extra credit. Zaya now has official two-player rules, which utilize the NPCs to trigger some more of the different missions, and also have a lone drifter to allow you to fly around the verse and catch up with your opponents more quickly. The Kiln is a space station that always starts in the middle of the board, orbiting the dying star. You can dock with the space station by moving your ship adjacent and using one movement to put your ship onto the NPC board. There are several different actions that can only be taken at the space station that are added into Embers of a Dying Star. Whenever you dock with the Kiln, you roll a d6 and move it around the star that many spaces. There are three new dead world sectors that you add to the tile deck. Whenever you reveal a dead world, you put a number of relic tokens on that dead world, and you can go to the excavation marker and try to excavate. 11 through 20, you get to take a relic token and put it on your ship from that planet's supply. The relic tokens take up two cargo spaces on your ship. On a 1 through 10, you will take that much ice damage onto your ship. Ice damage is a brand new type of damage that is easily resolved if you land on a planet, it melts and goes away. But if you're left out in space at the end of your turn, it'll spread into each adjacent space on your ship. Other than that, it still counts as normal damage for destroying your ship. Once you have your relic token, you need to take it back to the space station to take the sift action to be able to flip over your relic token and see what's on the other side. You can either get fame points or get extra credits, goods, or different mods and outfits you can immediately put on your ship. There are 30 replacement exploration tokens that completely replace the exploration tokens from the core game. The first one allows you to get a random cargo cube. There are cargo cube exploration tokens for each different type of cargo. And then there are ones that completely refill the energy on your ship when you explore them. There is also one that allows you to get an immediate extra five movement for your turn. And then there's one that also can damage your ship with one ice damage. Then there's also a lost pilot that allows you to get a 
fishing card ignoring the entire rest of the mission, but you're just putting one credit on that card and trying to drop it off at the dropout point on that mission. After completing the different effects of your expiration token, you keep it until you get two expiration tokens. Then you can immediately exchange those two tokens for two credits or one fame point, allowing expiration to be much more lucrative. There are three new anomaly sectors. Anomalies have these paths on them that will suck your ship into whatever direction the path points. When you step onto the path, you'll roll a die for your ship based on the type of path. This one you roll a d6 and you'll move your ship that far along the path. If you move too far, you might get sucked into a nebula or even a black hole with the Farron's Call sector tile which has the possibility of sucking your ship all the way into the singularity, destroying your ship. There are also three new ice asteroid sector tiles. Whenever you bring out an ice asteroid, you place a comet on the starting space. Whenever someone enters the path of the ice asteroid, you roll a d6 and move the asteroid that many spaces. If the asteroid hits your ship, your ship is destroyed. There is also a special type of resource that you can gain from ice asteroids called ember. When you gain Ember, you can go back to the space station and sell it for 2,000 credits each. There are 32 new mission cards in Embers. There are arms dealers where you get different outfits that you can sell illegally to different locations. There is Coerce where instead of actually attacking another ship, you just try to threaten them. There are cargo missions where you're trying to collect certain types of cubes and drop them off. And private eye missions where you're trying to find out what illegal activities are going on. There are two different new outfits that you can add to your ship. Both of these outfits cost a thousand credits and actually hang off the side of your ship. You put the green part of the outfit on the ship and then the rest hangs off and you have the cargo pod which gives you extra space to add cargo on and then the armor plating has extra spaces that you can have damage in. There are also four mods. Mods can only be bought at the space station or you can get them at the start of the game. The GTS sits adjacent to one of your engines and makes the minimum roll be added up by two, but you can't go over the max of that engine. So if you roll a one, it would make your movement roll go up to a three, so you could move three spaces. But if you roll a five, it would only move it up to a six. The Enviro Shield sits on top of an activation space of your shield outfit. It allows you to use that activation to get the max roll for that shield, but can only be used to mitigate environmental effects like mining for asteroids. The mission computer allows you to carry one more mission than you normally can. It also allows you to get a plus two when rolling a die to see the outcome of a mission. The piercer will go over top of a activation space on a blaster or missile. Whenever you activate that space where the piercer is, you will negate your opponent's shields by four. You can have multiple piercers to be able to maximize this effect, but it's a way to make your damage go straight through to your opponent. There's also one more sector tile, the Samaria Gate. This gate connects to the other gates currently in the core set of Zaya and helps you be able to more easily traverse the verse. There are several rules changes to the core rules of the game. So now when you gain missions, you will choose your mission that you're going to keep on your opponent's turn so they're not having to wait for you to figure out what exactly you're going to keep. Then also when you die, you no longer lose turns, your ship comes back with a little bit of damage. And also if you have an assassinate mission and that opponent dies, you get to complete that mission even if you're not the person to do the last point of damage. There's also a solo mode added to Embers of a Forsaken Star that allows you to either play one-off solo missions or a campaign that you can play different missions through trying to figure out how to best min-max your ship to be able to complete them and there's also a tech tree of different upgrades you get as you go through the campaign. Embers of a Forsaken Star allows you to do all sorts of cool sandbox things and build your ship the way you want to as you're flying around the verse trying to become the most famous space pilot. So, Mark, let's start with you. What do you think? Oh my gosh. After looking at everything that comes in this box and hearing about the rule changes, 
I cannot imagine playing Zaya without this expansion mm -hmm. ever yeah. again. There's just no way I would do it. Yeah. It's one of those games where you're like, oh yeah, this is just part of the game now. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And there's so many neat things like the space station and the and how the black hole works. Oh my gosh. And some of the, all the things they fixed and the new, the ice cubes and how they expand in the ship you don't go back to a world, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so cool. You definitely, in this expansion, you can't say that there's a little bit of stuff and changes the game a little bit. There's massive this things in this expansion. A serious upgrade to the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. And I love that there's all these crazy events going on. Yeah, I was going to say. That is so cool. Yeah, I... I, I uh, I like how they have it where they trigger at certain points. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's just happening random. Like, you know if somebody's getting ready to, to go somewhere, this is about to happen. Right. You know, something will pop up on the board and it'll be like, oh man, how do how can I use that to my advantage? Or, oh man, that really messes up over there. I need to stay away from that. There's actually like ones that even, mm -hmm. like if you're an outlaw and you're near the like lawful planet and you like fly up close to it they'll start like shooting at your ship right, and stuff like right, that right, right. so it's like just this crazy weird like tons of theme injected into the yeah. game with these events but you only see a few of them each game yeah. so you i mean there this new point track um thing makes events pop up at different times depending on when people get points so you only see several of them in the game and there's a huge deck so it makes every game of zaya different and i think Folks who complained about the engines mm -hmm. failing by rolling a one, well, now you you have a minimum distance you can fly. Um, if yeah, you, you can get these little mods that yeah, you can put on your from engines the space from the right? space station that's going that on. You can get so mods cool. for your guns, yeah. mods for your shields, and then I like one of the shields that Royal Stone's about, which is not necessarily a mod for your shield when you're being under attack, but when you're trying to mine something, yeah, yeah. it is so annoying oh, when you're yeah. getting blown up by asteroid fields no, and stuff yeah. like that. And oh, so, uh, and speaking of death, right? Yeah, death. Yeah. That whole, that whole, how that works is totally fixed. Yeah, yeah. which makes it so, so much better. Right. If yeah. that was not already a home rule for you, right? It should have been. Yeah. Yeah, in the original game, if you died, you're gonna like lose turns depending on the tiers of ship. And it was actually like, if you're a tier two ship, you lose one turn. If you're a tier three ship, you lose two turns. Turns. Yeah. So now they Ooh. took that out completely. So you only take like a, one damage if you're a tier one, two damage if you're a tier two, yep. and three damage if you're a tier three. So it lets people play the game more. There's a lot of things in this expansion that little nitpicky things that people oh, yeah. had about the game and that they just fix and take care right. of. Right. I love that there's more thematic going on. Like the dead worlds and you have to take what you escap what you pull from the world and have it sifted yeah, yeah. and gone through the space station. That has a lot of the oh, yeah. theme to the game. Yeah, it definitely adds a lot more pick up and deliver elements yeah, as different yeah, things yeah. as you're running around. Another thing people had issues with was the whole um, short routes for like the the, right. the the merchants where they could just fly back and forth. They fixed that whole thing with an economy board. So now there's uh, like a limited quantity of cubes that these different planets have that you can buy from them. And once they run out, you have to sell at another planet to be able to make that planet um, be able to. Uh, create the, the correct right. cues. And I, so. I would say that I've had a couple games that are kind of neck and neck as my favorites, but this expansion mm -hmm. elevates Zaya to my favorite game. My only downside uh, about this expansion is it doesn't feel like an expansion, it feels like a requirement. Because it really just, just makes everything better. Like, Zaya the game yeah, is yeah. phenomenal, right. we all like it, we've all played it, but I don't know if I would ever play the base game again yeah. without this. Or mm -hmm. at least the updated rules or something like that. It's yeah. just there's a few tweaks that they add into the expansion that you could take over those that are just like minor rule changes with like the, the losing of turns and things like that. Mm -hmm. But having those mods, like the customization in your ships in Zaya was always awesome because you could right. be like, do I want guns? Do I want shields? Do I want engines? And even like the size of the guns and shields and engines, it's like, how do I want to build the ship to do what I want it to do flying around the verse? Then you add all these mods and you can have like my favorite new mod or at least one of them is oh, yeah, the, cargo yeah, the cargo bay and yeah. the fact that you can just add extra space onto yeah. your ship so this actually makes it so a lot of times you're like rushing to get the, the oh, tier yeah. 2 and tier 3 Absolutely. because you don't have enough space right. now, I really need not... space for cubes now you can be a tier you 1 ship a little bit more and, yeah. and buy cool things for your tier 1 ship and have a little bit more space oh so if, and you, on the flip if, side, you, right? if you have this on a tier 1 does it carry over to a tier 2 yeah any of the oh. mods you have on tier 1 awesome. you get to carry over to the other one, so awesome. we just have extra space in our ship, so you can be a merchant and a pirate. Because a lot of times you'd have to choose: do I want to put cubes on my ship, or do I want to put guns on my ship? Right now, I'm going to put guns on my ship and a cargo pod on my ship, so I can yeah. do both. Right, right, right. <laughs> and the other side of that is shields. So if you just want to be right. that jerk who's just running around shooting everybody all the mm -hmm. time, which 
Nobody at this table ever no, does that. Never. You can now put those extra shields on your base because you know it's coming back. Yeah, and you have a little bit more room to still be a merchant with yeah. your, your cargo pods. So that's, it's that's amazing. So many really nice enhancements. Yes, it's, it's really awesome when a company listens to feedback. Yeah, because it seemed like they really implemented they really a did. lot of ideas. Not that anything was terrible about the first game. We all loved it. It, it did Absolutely. very well, but yep. they took the the community feedback and the fan feedback and play testing feedback yeah, and yeah. They really implied. Yeah. into the expansion. He really took all that to heart and really did a fantastic job. And these comments, man, they I just... Are. All the components, right? Everything. They're so, so good. Great. It's just fantastic. I just, <laughs> yeah. I love the little ice tail and stuff like yeah, that. And then these little so tracks cool. where you jump in and then if you land on the track, you got to roll a dice and stuff like that. Especially this, the whole black, the black, black hole of death mm -hmm. type yep. of a thing. And they add extra... Um, extra places in like they have an extra teleporter so it's easier to get around the map because the map is going to be bigger when you play with yeah, this right. they have a lot Obviously. more area to explore and a lot more things a lot more going on but on. with bigger engines and more places to teleport and things like that it makes it so you can still get around the verse and kind of do the things you want to do with that pickup and deliver right. oh and the whole uh ice on the ship so now there's this new thing where your ship can ice get damage ice yeah. damage and then it does not go away unless you're you uh, unless you land on a planet to warm back up yeah, yeah. and yep. after would you say after every turn it just spreads it's, it's spreads to every orthogonally adjacent space so if you're flying out in space and you've got some ice damage your ship's just gonna freeze up and die so it, it's really easy to get rid of too you just have to land on a planet you don't have to pay any money up. and it goes away but if you don't land on a planet then you're gonna gonna feel it <laughs> right absolutely literally but yeah there's three new ships that come in the expansion yeah. um, and then they've got a couple of extra ones that if you're Kickstarter stuff but they have new powers and all that stuff so there's just more great stuff ones that can allow you to teleport back to where you came from. Ones that allow you to mine even when you're not on the mining space. You can go to like different asteroids right. to mine weird stuff. I, and then um, just other ones that allow you to carry more missions and things and like that. And there's a new starting spot? Yeah, so now you have the uh, starting tile that has the, the kiln flying around it and that's where you can get your mods and stuff. Yeah. So it, it also makes it so that when you start the game there's just not ever nowhere that you can land to get your energy right. back. So before, if you just kept pulling tiles as you're mm -hmm. flying around and there's just no energy anywhere, mm -hmm. then um, a lot of people could just kind of be lost in space if there's yeah. nowhere to land and right. refill your energy. Now you have a place that you can always go back to at the beginning, yeah. so that's cool as well. I love the new hazards, especially the black hole. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. there's some. You can get some pretty nifty stuff off that track, but man, you can but get the dice have that. to be so nice to you. They, they do, they do, but it's super cool how oh, yeah. it works. How you roll the dice and you follow the trail in, and you keep mm -hmm. pushing your luck to see if you can just pick up those last. And then, if you make it into the orange area, every time you land on a new uh, land on a track, you have to re-roll again. So if yeah. you're stuck in basically the death spiral, yeah. then you, you have to roll try out, to get and then out. You can and roll and suck you right back in. Try to get out and suck you back in. That is awesome. Another thing that's cool is there's a planet that has those things that move you around. But if you're lucky enough to be able to land on it, you can go in there and just exchange any type of cube for a completely mm -hmm. different type of cube. No, so that helps nice. you drop things off a different planet, helps your pick up and deliver by giving you the cubes you need, and can also help you with several different of the new missions that require right. cubes. There's new missions, new um, uh, fame point like titles, new events, yeah, new the, everything. There's a solo player mode now. Right. There's a yeah. two player mode now. That's pretty amazing. I mean, they have this is not one of those things where you need to get a bunch of people together anymore. Right. I right. mean, this is one of those, if you're a true fan of the system and the yeah. IP and everything like that, you can pull it out basically whenever you want. Right. Awesome. And, oh, you know what? You should talk about a couple of the events. There's some pretty neat things that are happening yeah. with these. Yeah. What do you think is the most exciting? I mean, there's ones that like have supernovas bursting out of the middle stars. So that makes it cool. more more dangerous to go to, to the, go middle. the middle. Or yeah. ones that down all the shields. One of the things about Zai is all the plants have these planetary shields around it, kind of like in yep. Rogue One. That's yeah. right. <laughs> um, you're, you have to go through specific it's access points yeah. to get in. Um, but uh, there's ones that power down all those shields, so it makes Roots interesting because you're flying in the other side of the planet. There's ones that bring NPCs on the board that will like chase you around and gun you down like super outlaw. So you have the normal outlaw going around, but then mm -hmm. there's the cinder beard outlaw that comes out of the deck and like chases you down. And a lot of these are really exciting, so I would actually suggest you don't read them until they actually right, come up. Until they come up. Um, and then you can be like, oh man, what's happening in our Isaiah game this time? And it yeah. makes it exciting. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff is modular too, so if there's certain things you don't like or do like, you can yep. take mm -hmm. in and out and play easily. the game yeah, the way that you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And that's part of what makes it such a great sandbox game. It, yeah. it truly is that. It's not just a buzzword people use for this game. It really is you're playing in a sandbox, mm -hmm. doing whatever you want. It's just a fantastic yep. and experience. And all the options they've added with this expansion just allow you to do more of whatever you want. Yep. Like oh, you yeah. can, there's new ways to get fame points, new things you can do all over the place, so yep. it makes it exciting. I'm super, super excited about this. You've got to check it out. Awesome guys. Well, I think we recommend. Yep. Uh, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. If you like Zaya, you have to get it. Yeah. This Hands is down. a must. Must. Yeah, must. Get. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been Roy from Epic Gaming Night and Robert Newman from Epic Gaming Night. And Mark Street from Board Game Corner. Check everything out. We'll and see he's you in the time. corner. Actually, later. He's in the. I'm corner. in the corner. He's in the corner. Pro tip, don't blind jump into a sun, especially Zaya, Legends of a Drift System. Oh yeah. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.